I see more and more people getting in the room, so I suggest we wait until like we wait uh, one more minute before we start. Okay, so maybe we can slowly start. So as I said uh, before, um, so this talk is going to be recorded and put uh, um, on the website of the Data Intelligence Institute of Paris. So you will be able to watch it afterwards. Uh, and so we'll first present you, Mustafa, before uh, giving you the, the lead of this, uh, this talk. So uh, Mustafa Mosavi, you, you did, uh, you're now a research scientist at Google and you have also an adjoint uh, position uh, professor position at Stanford University, the same university where you did actually your postdoc uh, beforehand, and you received um, a PhD from the University of Memphis in 2017, if I do recall well. Uh, your research mainly focuses on the understanding of earthquakes, but also side effects with the big aim of improving our knowledge of these uh, phenomena, but also on the seismic hazards, more generally speaking, and you developed uh, a lot of uh, uh, work on improving the analysis we do of earthquakes by applying some statistical methods and also uh, uh, artificial intelligent tools in order to uh, denoise and uh, better detect and locate uh, the seismicity and other phenomena, also improve the characterizations of these signals. And so you're going to speak today about, uh, generally speaking, how we can apply deep learning and adapt these algorithms to uh, the analysis of seismograms. So uh, thank you again for accepting to speak in this uh, distinguished lecture and uh, the floor is now yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, first of all, for inviting me and uh, also thank you for making time uh, for this presentation. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, uh, these days we are Hearing uh, a lot of news about scientific break breakthroughs made possible by AI. Uh, frequently, uh, so today I'm as a re good representative of the Earth science. I'm going to give you an overview of the applications of cutting edge AI technologies in seismology and how they can make it. So this will keep, provide you an overview of the challenges, uh, progress, challenges, and opportunities. So first of all, uh, let's uh, start by what is the seismology. Seismology is the study of vibrational waves recorded as a time series like this one, which we call seismogram that can be generated not only by earthquake, but also by many other sources, such as explosion, thunderstorm, glaciers, moving objects, etc. The goal of uh, seismological studies is often to either understand the property of the source of these waves, uh, such as earthquake, or the medium they travel to. Based on the origin of seismic energy and the survey type, we can group them into two main groups of passive and active seismology that today I will cover deep learning application in both of them. This is how data look like in seismology. In many cases, the ground motion is recorded continuously, typically on a uh, rates from a few hundreds to a few 
thousand points per second and usually for three components of motion on a network of stations or array of sensor arrays that could include up to thousands of sensors. So seismology is clearly a data rich science. And this characteristic of it just keep growing by developing uh, development of more cost-effective sensors and emerging of new ground motion sensing technologies, such as fiber optic cables uh, or uh, accelerometer in a smart devices, which, which are expanding the volumes of seismological data rapidly. And at least for some tasks, seismology is a data-rich science because of the work of analysts who have been processing and labeling these seismograms manually and carefully for decades. So not only these put seismology as a fertile ground for application of data-hungry methods like deep learning, but also deep learning is uh, also likely to become an essential tools to the future of seismology as one of the main provider and provider of scalable approaches uh, for processing of large volume data that these days we are dealing with in seismology. This is one reason that machine learning algorithms like neural networks have entered almost every sector of seismology, outperformed many classical approaches, and made deep learning seismology an indispensable part of the modern seismology. To better understand this, we should start from deep neural networks and what makes them special for processing and modeling of seismic data. Artificial neurons, the building blocks of neural networks, simply perform a linear transformation, translation followed by a nonlinearity to their input data. A network of these neurons arranged into layers can learn then a complex relationship between the inputs and outputs through an iterative process of adjusting the connection weights between these neurons. This make the neural networks a very powerful tool to learn the mapping between the input data and provided labels in a supervised fashion or the patterns in the data in an unsupervised setting. Simply, uh, simple neural networks like this one, usually with one layers and a few neurons, uh, have been used in seismology for a long time and with more or less steady rates till very recently that their application of a deeper network in seismology have been rapidly rising. This is not only because of these uh, deeper networks can handle a more nonlinearity in the data, but also it is because of uh, the applications of hybrid network that include additional convolutional or recurrent layers become popular as well. Convolutional layers essentially perform a cross correlation of the input waveform uh, and the short template function where these uh, template themselves are learned from the data successive steps of convolution operation eliminates the need uh, for manual uh, to manually compute features and ensures that the extracted features are optimized for a given data and provide a sparse representation of core data. On the other hand, these additional connections and internal states provided in recurrent neural networks enable them to learn the temporal relationship between the components of a sequential data like seismograph. So these two properties 
make deep neural networks a very appealing tool for processing of seismic data that has some similarities with the data structures in computer vision and natural language processing. This is a hierarchical distribution of neural network applications for seismological tasks and color coded based on the nature of these tasks. Overall, you see that most of the applications so far belong to the automation of data processing and solving the inverse problem, both in active and uh, passive seismology. And relatively less focus has been uh, on the forward modeling and the exploratory data analysis. So let's take a closer look at some of these. In active seismology, once a seismic image is obtained from a survey, it, it needs to be processed first. The recorded seismogram almost always contains some unwanted energy this could be either a random or non-random noise or other type of signals. Uh, so it is necessary to perform some sort of denoising first. Classical seismic denoising techniques use uh, some statistical assumptions to estimate the noise level from a noisy observation and suppress it properly using some mathematical methods or mathematical models. Uh, however, the performance of these methods is always limited as their estimates or uh, the estimates of noise are not very accurate and also suppressing of suppressing mechanism to reduce that those noise level are not very flexible. Deep learning based approaches for seismic denoising can be put into two main categories of supervised and unsupervised techniques. In supervised approach, a deep neural networks is used to learn a complex statistics of noise and signal directly from a large scale uh, realization of noisy data and suppress it more flexibly. However, this and the performance of these groups of methods is, uh, in practice, depends on how well these semi-synthetic data represents the actual noise in real-world data. To overcome these difficulties of obtaining a good distribution of realistic noisy data and their clean pairs, Unsupervised method relies on a sparse representation of learning attributes of some variety of neural networks like autoencoders to attenuate those uncoherent noise without the need for labeling or use generated models to learn the domain mapping from noisy data domain to the clean uh, domain clean signal domain without a need for pair, basically, data. The performance of deep learning denoiser in suppressing different types and levels of the noise in 1D, 2D, 3D seismic data is remarkable. Not only they can achieve a better denoising performance, they, uh, but also they have a lower computational cost than traditional method and do not require any prior assumptions or human interaction for the denoising process. Uh, deep learning has uh, have all uh, has uh, been also shown to be an effective tool for a variety of other seismic image processing tasks such as velocity analysis, frequency, expo uh, extrapolation, trace interpolation, and etc. After pre-processing, it is time now to interpret or extract uh, useful information about either geology or structure of subsurface from these seismic images. This is basically a type of image under, uh, understanding. Hence, applications of 
popular deep neural networks from computer vision, like CNN, is a natural choice. Se seismic facial analysis uh, or identifying different seismic responses that could be associated with different geological units is a task for which machine learning based clustering method have been used in practice extensively and for a long time. However, the clustering results usually require some additional geological interpret interpretation or calibration by the human analyst. In recent years, uh, what has happened, the new progress is that the end-to-end -end models have been developed using the neural networks that provide interpretable results directly. So in this case, in addition to the feature learning and the dimensionality reduction ability of deep neural networks, the classification ability is very useful. The power of deep neural network for image segmentation, object detection, make them a well-suited choice for a structural interpretation tasks such as automatic identification of geological channels, uh, fault, uh, false horizons on underground uh, Parse flaps, salt bodies, unseismic images that have applications in oil and gas explorations. A major challenge in these applications uh, that seismologists faced was the lack of large scale label data for the training that they solved by developing innovative and sophisticated techniques to generate realistic synthetic data based on the known physics and utilizing advanced data augmentation techniques to expand them. Now let's move on to the passive seismology and event monitoring. Earthquake monitoring is a foundational, uh, is foundational for earthquake science and perhaps one of the most widely used product of seismologies, outside of seismology are earthquake catalogs. To produce an earthquake catalog like this one, which provides the location, time, and size of the earthquakes, one needs to first perform several processing tasks on the raw seismic data to detect the signals associated with the event, discriminate between uh, different types of earthquake determine the arrival time of distinct seismic waves or phases and their clarity. Uh, then next, link these individual uh, arrival times to a common origin, which is called association, before being able to characterize the hypercentral location and the magnitude of an earthquake. Most of these are classification tasks, but I especially will explain phase detection and peaking with a little bit more details in following the slides as they have been used extensively in practice these days. This is how a deep learning phase picker works. The label P and S wave rivals are usually man, uh, which are usually manually picked by analysts, are represented by binary vectors. And then a neural network then is used to learn the mapping between the three component seismic waveforms and these target labels. You can think of a deep learning uh, detector and picker as a kind of universal templates represented by multi-scale features and connection weights between them uh, in a network uh, that are learned from a large variety of label waveforms. Unlike seismic image interpretation and those uh, other tasks in exploration seismology, uh, for this task, we have tons of free uh, freely available archive seismograms and labels for phase picking and earthquake detection. However, labeling and generating the training data set is not as straightforward as linking these two. 
for instance, sometimes you can not find the signal of an earthquake that exists in the catalog on the continuous data simply because of timing errors. On the other hand, you may find many other events in addition to the one that exists in catalog. Moreover, the handpicked parameters like arrival time do not necessarily mean that they are 100% accurate. And after all, our catalogs are complete down to a certain magnitude, and there are usually many more smaller earthquakes existing continuous data for them we don't have any. So these challenges make generating of a large scale precise uh, data sets uh, with reliable labels itself uh, a complicated project itself. Uh, beside this, there is a still a need to fill the gaps between the distribution of the samples data uh, in the training set and the real world data through some data augmentation techniques. So far, many models, uh, almost over 80 different models, different papers have been developed for these tasks, utilizing different network architecture, performing these tasks in different domains, using different types of data, uh, different types of instruments, and uh, at the different observation level. And com but common observation out of all of these studies are that in overall deep learning based model can be robust while computationally very efficient. They systematically perform uh, outperform classical approaches. And the performance improvement is more evident uh, for more challenging phase like phases like S wave. And uh, on data with this normal signal to noise ratio, they can pick seismic phases with similar precision as a skilled analyst. Uh, but they can go also beyond the human capability and peak phases on noisy and weak signals like this one that are associated with much smaller events that we usually have in our typical earthquake cattle. So let's see what these smaller earthquake can tell us uh, from one example. Dots in these maps are earthquake for a one year time period from USGS uh, earthquake catalog. Even from this low density map, we can make some interesting observation like these uh, two dots or two earthquake in central US that happened where we did not expect them based on our seismic hazard maps. Uh, we didn't expect high level of uh, seismic hazard and any earthquake of this size at this uh, location. So if you zoom in around this uh, central, this earthquake, all we see are two earthquakes. The first one is a magnitude 4.1, and around four months later, there was another 4.7 that happens in the south of the first one. And that's almost all we can say about uh, this earthquake based on a catalog that is com complete down to magnitude 3.5. So with this information, we cannot explain why these earthquakes occur in a place where there was no past history and no known faults. Uh, however, if you look at some seismic data recorded by, a, uh, by one of the seismic uh, or seismic station uh, close to the area, we see that many more smaller earthquakes uh, in addition to that magnitude 4.7. The reason that these uh, the smaller earthquake are initially uh, initially did not show up in USG's catalog is simply because the common algorithm used by earthquake monitoring agencies 
for routine processing of seismic data are not sensitive and scalable enough to process all of these tinier earthquakes that happen much more frequently, but have much more challenging and uh, weaker signals. Dr. Stephen uh, S.T. Horton, uh, who is a very experienced seismologist, uh, after a few months of manual processing of the data to tell us much more about the possible source of these seismicity by eliminating a previously unknown faults just by detecting and locating some of those smaller earthquakes that we saw in the raw data and lowering the magnitude of completeness to 1.5. So uh, we thought this could be a good case study to put one of our earlier deep learning models into a real test. Uh, what you see here are the results of automatic reprocessing of the same data set and detecting almost an order of magnitude more earthquakes. Uh, these yellow circles uh, that you see on the maps are based are disposal ways wells where oil and gas uh, companies are uh, injecting basically, basically their wastewater from hydraulic fracturing down into the uh, deeper part of the earth and the size of these markers are proportional to the volume of uh, wastewater injection at each of these wells uh, so we see that while there was some injection activity in the area, even back in 2009, no earthquake occurred until the injection started at this well, which apparently was very close to the fault that at the, at the time was unknown, and then it triggered uh, the seismicity, which is stopped shortly after termination of the wastewater injections. Let's just go over it one more time. This is a very classical example of induced seismicity. Okay, if we take a closer look at the evolution of seismicity along the fault, we see that uh, it consists of two subsequent. The first sequence started in the northern segment of the fault near well number one and five, and almost two months later after the first sequence, the second sequence, it started in the southern section, uh, which which you see at one point it started rupturing back to the north of the fall and uh, resulting in the largest earthquake, uh, the magnitude 4.7, this one, at uh, this part of the fault. So these subsequences uh, have different migration pattern that might suggest the existence of two different diffusive diffusion mechanism at these two segments of the fault. Previously, we showed that we could explain the mechanism of first sequence through some simulations that suggest the uh, pressure field from the hypopressure buildups by the fluid injection into the aquifer, mainly uh, by well number one, increase the pool pressure along the fault zone down to the crustal and basin basement that explain the observed seismicity very well. 
But the higher resolution of the new catalog revealed more details and some evidence suggesting that one of these disposal wells that had been active for a long time prior to the seismic stream might have some connections and contribution to the triggering of the second sequence. It also revealed diffusive, diffusive patterns of seismicity at the shorter time scale, some repeated elimination of large parts of the fault by seismicity, and several additional uh, clusters of seismicity due to the hydraulic fracturing and tectonic activities. The real-time monitoring of these macro trip, their diffusivity and their diffusion class process, along uh, with some information about the injection volume, could be used to estimate the probability of uh, occurrence of large events, which could be quite useful for operational purposes and decision making. Uh, these new uh, things that we just learned about the Arkansas sequence uh, and by uh, reprocessing of data from a handful of station uh, can give you an idea about what wealth of information is lying down in seismic data that are recorded continuously uh, on thousands of seismic stations across the country and around the world. What I presented you was just one of the early examples of real world applications of these new generation of uh, deep learning based speakers. Since then, multiple studies have shown that the new generation of deep learning based speaking. The, uh, deep learning based earthquake catalogs provide a higher resolution image of the seismically active parts of the fault simply by building, uh, by including many more events, those dots that connect uh, the seemingly isolated earthquake uh, together. You said the immediate scientific insight uh, that I briefly presented you one of. Uh, one example of them is more complete catalog with unprecedented sp spatial temporal resolution to help us for a better understanding and hopefully for passing the earthquake. This is why uh, these models uh, are widely used in practice these days. Just as an example, EQ Transformer, which is just one of these models uh, in past two, three years have been applied in seismic data recorded at different parts of the world in different tectonic settings and help us to learn new things about the earthquake. Uh, from those occurring at the middle of the ocean to those on mountainous areas, from those that occur uh, naturally due to the tectonic loading to those triggered by uh, human activities, and it has been used to find hidden active faults to track uh, subcritical geothermal fluid distribution, to monitor aftershock sequences, and also to detect the foreshocks. Moreover, uh, it motivated the de uh, developments of multiple software packages to either facilitate their use or improving the performance in a very creative way. After all, I, I should again point out that all of these improvements in earthquake monitoring and new seismic uh, scientific results uh, were obtained only by empowering one task or one step in the earthquake monitoring work workflow by the deep learning models. This is a still, there is a still a lot of room for improvement by developing deep learning based models for other monitoring tasks, especially for inferring the airstrip uh, hypercenter and magnitude, uh, which is an inverse problem. So this is a good segue to the inverse uh, problem section. And as you can see, comparing with the data uh, processing and other, uh, other and even other inversion tasks, less work have been done 
to invert the earthquake source parameters from the observed seismic uh, observed ground motions, we can divide this into two main categories. One category of studies uh, try to reformulate the conventional approaches that are based on the propagation of the seismic energy and the physics that we know about the wave propagation across a network of seismic station. And basically using neural networks as a new platform for the inversion. Uh, on the other hand, we had uh, the second groups of study that goes a little bit further and try to explore new possibilities that deep learning may uh, offer like extracting the information about earthquake source location and magnitude directly from a short duration of seismograms observed on a single station. Uh, these unconventional methods can significantly improve or catalog by making it feasible to basically monitor smaller earthquake through sparse networks with a large uh, coverage. Another example from these groups of studies is uh, determining the earthquake source based on uh, unconventional part of the data, like this example here, but which estimated the location and magnitude of large, very, very large earthquake from a prompt uh, last gravity signals recorded before even arrival of seismic waves. Uh, this is particularly useful for earthquake early warning system uh, because it can solve the challenge of uh, underestimation of very large earthquake uh, in conventional seismology. The application of machine learning for inverting physical parameters from observed seismic data to characterize the Earth's subsurface properties in it is an area that not only in which the deep neural networks have been used extensively, the diversity of these approaches taking advantage of different properties of deep neural networks is remarkable. Using a deep neural network to invert for subsurface property directly from the seismic uh, data is one common approach. Uh, besides this, uh, end to end approaches, seismologists have taken advantage of other properties of deep uh, neural networks. For instance, they use the universal approximation property of neural networks to basically reparameterize an Earth model as in a set of features and weights uh, in deep convolutional neural network. This basically provides a differentiable representations of the Earth's model in a low dimension space that not only have some regularization if they also could reduce the computational cost of the inversion process. Similarly, uh, they use uh, dimensionality reduction ability of deep neural network to basically transfer large dimension inversion problem into a low lower dimension model space and solve the inverse problem uh, effectively and efficiently in a low dimension space, which also has some regularization effect. Besides these, uh, deep learning have been used inside the conventional inversion work workflow to perform different parts of the procedure and improve the performance. Uh, and more interesting, actually, uh, approaches are that seismologists could by uh, could introduce some additional operators into the neural neuron computations uh, to constrain basically a recurrent neural network by a wave equation and use it for a full wave for inversion, taking advantage of efficient automatic differentiation and GPU parallel computing, uh, computing tower of popular deep learning platforms like TensorFlow, PyTorch. And in the last group of the studies, they went even further 
by designing a specialized neural network architecture specifically designed for wave-based inversion. In summary, uh, in summary, the inversion of subsurface properties using uh, basically deep neural network is much faster than conventional ones, uh, less sensitive to the noise, to the missing of the low frequency component initial models, and allow uh, processing of multimodal inputs as well. Uh, theoretical uh, seismogram or synthetic are widely using seismology to interpret the data, although the applications of deep learning for seismic wave simulation has been limited, but they appear to provide an effective alternative for standard numerical methods, the use of uh, physics informed neural networks, neural operator and uh, generated adversarial networks are common trend for this application in seismology. Uh, another task in forward modeling is the use of neural networks uh, to estimate the distinct, distinct ground motion attributes, such as the maximum ground shaping intensity, based on parameters like magnitude of earthquake, distance to a site, and the local condition of uh, basically soil types uh, under a region, etc. These ground motion models have different applications, such as in seismic hazard assessment, earthquake early warning systems, and structural engineering. Uh, the first groups of machine learning based models typically have a similar input output format, uh, similar to the traditional one, although they could provide a little bit uh, some non parametric models with more nonlinearity, but uh, deep learning enables the new generation of models that can predict the upcoming ground shaping levels at one side directly based on uh, what has been observed in other sites and widow the need for earthquake source parameterization or site condition. So these end-to-end -end models are particularly useful for earthquake early warning. Uh, systems and can offer accurate and timely warning. Forecasting the future earthquake has been a compelling subject for machine learning for a long time. Most of the machine learning models for earthquake forecasting uh, usually takes a space-time discretized seismicity indicator as their input and they output characteristic of future earthquake like their magnitude in time or time space being. Recently, a new generation of models have been developed that more directly incorporate the complete the spatial temporal structure of seismic catalog using deep neural networks and can provide more flexible models, although still in an experimental stage, this approach can learn the dynamics of the data uh, better and hopefully could shed some new lights on this long lasting problem. Moreover, the learning offers some new opportunities in earthquake forecasting by blending different potentially precursory data and known earthquake physics with seismic data and also underlying physics that remain unknown. Although deep learning uh, can be used to recognize pattern and extract insight directly from high dimensional seismic data, there are applications for exploratory analysis of seismic data and scientific finding are largely unexplored. And examples are very sparse, less than 1% of all the studies. This might be due to an atmosphere of suspicion or conserve, uh, conservation that it still exists among Earth scientists regarding the black box nature of this deep uh, learning model. Accepting the deep learning models on their own terms and, and 
condition can contribute into the scientific goal of a community, but uh, presenting the properties of these models in understandable uh, terms to the human and revealing the underlying reasoning for their outcome uh, could help to reduce this uh, skepticism and lead uh, and led to a wider adaptation within a community, scientific community like earth science. Although it may not be possible to fully and clearly explain how a deep neural network model works, we can still gain some level of useful information about learn model uh, using interpretation tools such as backward propagation techniques, saliency map, heat map, etc. These techniques provide us some interpretable representation of the basically input data uh, in understandable terms to the humans, which can then be used along with some domain knowledge, uh, physics, in the case of uh, seismology, to basically explain the outcome. As an example, in Ecotransformer, the model that uh, we already referred to a few times within this uh, talk, a hierarchy, uh, hierarchy attenuate, uh, attention models have been used to gain basically some insight into the interaction of task specific decoder branches and where and on what deep neural network focuses, which can give us a degree of interpretability. In addition to explaining the outcome, uh, the interpretability that I pointed out, it is possible to basically design uh, an interpretable deep learning models in which the model itself and its uh, component become explainable using some domain. In this approach, uh, the network, our network architecture is designed to provide insight by promoting or restricting the specific attributes of data that is being modeled. Domain knowledge, uh, the physics, can also be incorporated into the training data uh, by basically generating synthetic data or into the hypothesis uh, space by designing problem-specific neural network architecture, and also in training procedure, which is an example of the well-known physics in for neural networks. Now let's take a uh, like a step back and have a, a wider view of uh, these uh, trends and uh, basic application in seismology. Uh, these are top 25 seismological tasks uh, with most neural network applications. When we look at the number of publications, journal publications on each topic as a function of time, we do see some interesting shift of interest. Uh, while the first application of neural network in seismology were uh, related to the seismic image, basically uh, processing and interpretation, tasks such as first break peaking, horizon peaking, salt body detection, soon got uh, affected by the Cold War era and discriminating between man made explosion and natural earthquake become a dominant application for a long time. However, in recent years, this trend started changing with the entrance of deep learning models. Uh, now, event detection, phase peaking, and more recently, seismic denoising got some more attention and the momentum. One reason for this uh, change uh, is related to the data hungry nature of the deep learning. The massive archive of field seismic data uh, and available hand uh, labeled from public data set, as I pointed out uh, for the phase picking 
models played a crucial role in progresses made uh, for modern data-driven models for seismic event monitoring, such as earthquake detection and ferry speaking. But on the other hand, the scarcity of large, uh, large scale label field data for basically model building is more evident uh, in active seismology and for applications such as inversion, uh, uh, seismic image processing and interpretation. This scarcity is due to both a limited number of publicly available data sets as well as the subjectivity of labeling itself. However, seismologists came up with some creative solution for this problem. For instance, generating a physically uh, realistic subsurface velocity map at synthetic data uh, using natural images or fine tuning the models that have been pre-trained by on hand write, for example, uh, handwritten or natural images to, classify, uh, to classify volcanic uh, seismic events. Uh, there are also some challenges here. Unfortunately, not all of the reported improvements in literature lead to a real world performance increase. Often it is not clear what work and why. Which deep learning approach lead to a better performance. The implementation of benchmarking is currently very diverse and inconsistent across seismology. The choice of uh, weak or often non, not properly fine-tuned baselines, uh, different training and tested data processing evaluation protocol, uh, performance metric, etc., make it difficult to assess the real progress. To overcome this, uh, we need to encourage and ultimately enforce basically the standard benchmarking practices. Uh, for this, first we need to determine the gui guideline for reproducing the result and the choice of baseline, benchmark data, metrics, and reporting standards. Just as an example, these are the guidelines for uh, reporting uh, this. Uh, the guideline for reporting the results should cover these uh, topics. And next, we need to set up a clear guidance for reviewers to enforce for better, uh, basically, evaluation. In summary, uh, the learning is a powerful tool. Uh, a powerful tool. Uh, for processing and modeling of large volume, uh, high dimensional uh, seismic data that are often noisy and incomplete. Uh, this is because of several properties of the advanced neural networks that make them particularly useful for processing and modeling of seismic data. Given the incredible ability of deep neural networks and their uh, remarkable performance in multiple seismological tasks, they will soon or already become a norm in multiple seismic data analysis, uh, regardless of their interpretability issues and brittleness. However, this does not mean that the deep uh, neural network will replace the expert analyst. But those analysts who use it may outperform those who do not. Uh, what I presented to you today was a result of a multiple studies that we performed on a database of more than 800 journal papers published between January 1988 to January 2020 to learn from what has been done already in seismology. So this is a, a series of uh, basically review papers we published recently. Uh, our database aligned with the, an updating glossary of seismological tasks and relevant machine learning 
techniques are also available for researcher uh, to use, updates, or even edit them. And with that, I stop here. Uh, thank you again, and uh, I'm open to take any question if time is allowed. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for this very nice talk. Um, so um, I will I will let the, the attendees ask questions if they want. So you can either raise your hand and I will uh, give you the, the lead. So uh, I see that Temis is uh, raising his hand. So please, Temis, if you want. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, um, thanks most for, for this very interesting talk. Uh, so my background is on computer science. Uh, you sort of uh, mentioned uh, a, a few elements on this, but could you give us more details um, on the following? So the neural nets used uh, uh, by seismologists, uh, what is special uh, about them? So uh, what kind of uh, changes or modules uh, do you have to uh, add or uh, develop to make them fit uh, your kind of data, and, to <coughs> and also, sorry, and also, um, uh, how, how how do these models take into account uh, domain knowledge, uh, knowledge by the experts or knowledge by the physics laws, uh, etc. And uh, and and the second question, if you allow me, uh, you also mentioned that you are processing multivariate uh, series. Uh, so where does uh, where do the multiple variables come from? Thank you. Thank you. That is a good question. So the uh, about the properties of neural networks, I tried to uh, mention them uh, within the text. Uh, these uh, basically convolutional operators uh, tends to be very uh, very useful. Uh, in processing when it comes to the processing of seismic data. The, the thing is like we have also 2D seismic data, but 1D is more common. So uh, conventional, uh, so popular, uh, uh, it's very common to use uh, 1D convolutional neural networks to process the data. Uh, uh, I try to actually make a, uh, connection by pointing out to the cross correlation ability or analogy of these convolutional, uh, because this is very familiar for seismologists. This is uh, cross correlation, making templates, and uh, using similarities of waveform is something that uh, seismologists use all the time. And this is a, uh, an analogy and a similarity between what is done in convolutional neural network, which is basically actually, actually it is a cross correlation. Uh, and then I think uh, your next uh, question, and then be, beside that, so this feature extraction tends to be super helpful to basically reduce the dimensionality of data. And then the nonlinearity, they do for, uh, they provide us for modeling. Uh, of course, uh, like any other, uh, physical sciences is something that used a lot. About the multi multi modularity of these networks, uh, these are uh, something that has been less explored. Uh, uh, but uh, for instance, in terms of uh, 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 velocity inversion, in addition to seismic data, we have other information like. Uh, there's uh, something like well likes, which is basically a, uh, a speed of seismic wave in like uh, shallow layers in one location that has been measured through laboratory analysis. So people in uh, exploration seismic, for example, when they are inverting the seismic data to estimate the velocity or a speed of the wave, 
on, uh, on the ground, they, they use well like in addition to the seismic data to do the constraint. That's one example of multimodal. In earthquake science, for example, we know there are some precursor signals. Uh, this can be satellite imagery. This can be like ground uh, 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 displacement measured by GPS uh, signals, uh, et cetera, that can be added as additional inputs or weak seismic data into the model. That's a, a very useful properties of these new networks that they are open to as many as inputs you can in incorporate and then combine across the network. And uh, your third uh, question, if I remember correctly, was related about uh, embedding the domain knowledge physics into the network. Uh, physics inform, uh, uh, like constraining. Uh, initially, the most of the application uh, regarding to, uh, incorporating uh, domain knowledge into the uh, into the modeling process or in the seismology were limited to the synthetic data. We we are very good. We know the physics of the wave propagation, we are very good in generating the synthetic data. So people try to uh, basically teach physics to the neural network through the synthetic data they simulated based on numerical modeling, but then it shift to uh, what is known now as a physics inform by constraining or adding like, for example, wave equation as a part of loss function. Uh, and then the third category, which was those adding some additional external operator, like divergence uh, and some other operators that exist in wave equation, but they are missing from the, for example, the, the gates in recurrent neural networks. They generated basically new neural computing. Uh, that was one of the innovative parts from like seismology uh, contribution. When I was doing working on this review, I noticed some interesting fact. For example, we had some physics inform based uh, basically model two or three years before physics inform being introduced in uh, basically uh, math and math, applied math and uh, the well known. Uh, fluid simulation. I hope I answered some yeah, part. Of thank you very much. Do we have other questions from the room? I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, just in the continuation, what you were um, what you were explaining right now, do you think um, combining model where we know features from real data, like the selected known features, by the model that extract feature where we don't know what are those features? Like combining these two can help the explain, um, like increasing ex explainability of the model. Yeah, that's exact exactly one of the one way of basically designing uh, what I call interpretable or transparent model, and that's how you uh, basically constrain your uh, data driven model by some. Uh, if it's known in the design, that's definitely one example of uh, ways that you can uh, increase the interpretability of your model. Yeah, for sure, that's the one, one, one way, one viable way of uh, basically uh, adding some interpretability to your model procedure. Any other questions?
Well, actually, I, I do have a question uh, for you. Oh, okay. We just lost our slides. Um, so you, you were mentioning uh, the creation of benchmarks, which I understand is useful in order to later compare new algorithms and performances of these algorithms. Uh, the question I had was related to these benchmarks and the tasks we want to improve. So for instance, if we consider the denoising of seismograms, uh, what do you think is the actual limit uh, of the denoising performance of like seismograms at the time? Is it a question of, uh, is it an instrumental question or is it more related to the algorithms so the critical data size we don't have reached yet? in order to perform uh, efficient denoising and then improve by an order uh, of magnitude, again, the completeness magnitude of catalogs, for instance? Right, that's a good question. The, uh, it's hard to answer, actually. To, uh, the uh, benchmarking, when it comes to benchmarking, one of the main challenges in seismology mainly deal with the basically uh, subsurface uh, phenomena is that that the, the, uh, the source, the characteristic of the source itself is unknown. We don't know, for example, when it comes to the, uh, in addition to uh, the noise, which is a good example, like inverting for the subsurf uh, for earthquake source, for instance, is one of those tasks. Uh, we don't have any solid run. So we don't know what is going on in like 300, 200 kilometer down deep in the earth and how uh, and where actually an earthquake has been located. Uh, so when it comes to make benchmarking and many, uh, maybe making the benchmark data set, uh, labeling uh, and the subjectivity of the label itself is the main, one of the main barriers. Uh, denoising that you mentioned as an example is another uh, task for which uh, uh, clean signals is always unknown. And unfortunately, uh, the noise also uh, can have wide variety of forms. We know that the random noise that it was, it, it is what uh, one of the sources that people in computer vision deals with all the time is not the only problem in seismic data. Uh, we have wide variety of very coherent strong uh, noise that can be from either cultural noise or from a lot of natural sources, wind, thunderstorm, uh, etc. They, they contribute uh, and they can easily cover the a signal of interest, which are really hard actually to model because they have very, very, very diverse characteristics. Uh, uh, these are those uh, area that is, uh, we just uh, realized that how less we know uh, this complex interactive system of the Earth uh, when it comes to modeling. Uh, what we expect, and uh, we don't modeling we cannot estimate their properties uh, and making good benchmark. So that's th these are one of the challenges. Well, if I want to summarize all of those back to the subjectivity of the labelings that we are dealing with in natural sciences. Uh, uh, yeah, and perhaps like. Ask like earthquake face peaking and detection is sort of the seamless when it comes to the uh, labeling and low hanging uh, fruits. Uh, mm -hmm. But I agree, moving from this point, there's a lot of challenges we need to solve. But seeing all those creative approaches people uh, were developing in uh, earth science, optimistic actually. Okay, thanks. We have still room for one last question. Okay, so uh, 
Well, uh, we would like to thank you again, Mustafa, for giving this talk uh, in the Data Institute uh, Intelligence of Paris. And so we would be glad to continue the discussion with you another time. So thanks again for, uh, for participating. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for attending, everyone, and have a good day then.